So my uh, IP is in your big data in privacy. So the question, can social media companies use big data to influence people's views by invading their privacy? So first, big data are hum huge amounts of data that are used by social media companies to hold information about their users. So my argument is that yes, big, uh, big data can be used to influence people by invading their privacy. And while there might be advantages to this, there are major disadvantages, such as how uh, the possessors of this data, or the people who have access to it, might either sell it to third party companies, or might um, use it themselves to influence people indirectly. Uh, so social media companies should not have the ability to sell data. Okay, so why is it dangerous? This is dangerous because the amount of private data, because of the uh, amount of private data that companies can gather. Um, so a quote by uh, Edward Nicholas, a professor of um, data security, um, he believes that big data, because big data has been progressing so fast over the years, um, there should be new laws put in place to restrict, to put restrictions on this big data from doing too much damage. And a second reason is a third party uh, could use this uh, data to influence um, users. Um, so my single sources were extrasensory perception and ad attitudes for Muslim women in the West. Um, I used extrasensory perception because of how it describes big data. So in an example in this article, uh, it talks about Doppelab, which is a software that um, visualizes a building and overlays different types of data on it. This is, uh, this is uh, a type of big data because uh, new ways of visualization have to be used to portray it. Um, I used the attitude for uh, Muslim women in the West because it highlights how easily perspective can be changed. Um, there's an example in this article about 9-11. So before 9-11, people didn't really care about uh, or know about Muslim women. But after uh, the 9-11 time, um, people became more aware and they also became more biased towards them. Okay, so Google Access. This is an example of um, the invasion of privacy. So uh, Google Access is the software that's developed by Google and it uses search history to show relevant ads to um, these users. Um, so Google AdSense actually, uh, it might seem harmless, harmless, but it's actually very, very dangerous because Google essentially has the ability to view all of your search history. And Google might also uh, share this data with other third-party companies. So um, discrimination. Um, so when Google uses AdSense, it actually Google is not the one that posts these um, ads on these websites. Google gives other uh, companies access to post these ads. Um, and because of this, these companies might discriminate against other users based on the data that they have. Uh, this is illegal, uh, and this might influence bursts of racism. So, so statistics. 90% um, of the data in the world today has been produced in the past two years. Uh, this goes back to the Nicholas um, quote about how um, because uh, there's so much big data, there's, there, it's really important to have um, security and restrictions against it. Um, more than a billion unique visitors visit YouTube each month. Um, so because YouTube's parent company is Google, Google actually has access to all the videos that these users watch. And this is really dangerous. Um, and Google has more than a million pen, uh, petabytes, and one petabyte is actually one million gigabytes. Uh, so this just gives you an idea of how much data Google has on its users. Um, this is another current example of um, data uh, invasion of privacy. Um, so Facebook is very controversial right now because it sold data to Cambridge Analytica, which is a research and uh, data research company. Um, Cambridge Analytica then uh, shared this information with President Donald Trump during the 
presidential elections in 2016. And uh, President Donald Trump um, actually um, uh, used this data to influence uh, people to vote in the presidential elections. So, a solution. Um, I believe that the solution is making new laws that restrict the power of social media companies. The benefits of this are less data leaks and uh, uh, less selling of data. But uh, there are also disadvantages, such as how um, there might be more government control over social media. Um, so I, I believe that um, the uh, importance of people's privacy uh, is more important than a limited control of um, social media by the government. Uh, thank you. And these are my sources. Alright. So, let me ask you a couple of questions. So, what evidence did you gather that you didn't use and why did you choose not to use it? Um, so, I gathered a lot of evidence about how um, I gathered a lot of evidence about like past topics in the past decades, but I didn't use it because it wasn't current. It wasn't um, current and like because it was outdated. Okay. Um. And what <clears throat> might like so you were talking about the the law. So what might the implications be? How would that look for us in our real world? Well. So, because the government might have limited control over, the, over social media, that will raise a lot of concerns about, because social media is one of the important ways we express ourselves in this world. So, um, and we can see examples of like social media being restricted in like China, uh, where like, people actually use VPNs to express their opinions. So, this might actually change the image for the United States about how we look at ourselves. All right. Thank you.